So I doubt anyone ever thought that I'd be doing a review of this movie, but I actually have quite a bit to say about it. So for those of you who aren't familiar with him, Uwe Boll is a German director who made a stream of movies during the 2000s based on moderately popular video games. I, I suppose the most popular game he made a movie based off of was probably Far Cry. But he did House of the Dead, uh, Dungeon Siege, um, Postal, I'm trying to think what else, Blood Rain. He made three movies based off of Blood Rain somehow. Alone in the Dark. So it was a lot of kind of like medium tier video games. Movies, games that people have heard of, but not like the AAA ones, like Assassin's Creed or Prince of Persia or something like that. Like I said, with the possible exception of maybe Far Cry. So he kind of mass produced these movies during the 2000s and they were of dubious quality. And I don't really understand the mechanics of it, but apparently there was some sort of loophole in the German tax code where people would invest money in the movies and then they'd get a big tax credit. And even if it failed in theaters, he'd still make a profit based on DVD sales. Like I said, I don't really understand the mechanics of it, but he used it to fund all of this stuff. I, I think part of it was why he did video game movies is they were guaranteed to at least make some money and attract some investor attention. Now, he's also made a number of non-video game movies. Many of them actually have pretty good reviews. I haven't watched any of his non-video game movies, um, and I intend to. But he's just a very kind of iconic director from the, the 2000s in particular. He's very much kind of the Ed Wood or Roger Corman uh, for the modern era, albeit he's a lot more hated just by virtue of people felt that he demeaned high-quality video games like House of the Dead. Um, that, that was like, House of the Dead is, is, is a big deal. It's, it's known for being like a mass-produced, crappy, quarter-feeding arcade game. You wouldn't want to demean that, but Uwe Boll has, always has a bit of charm to him. Like, if you ever see him being interviewed, he just talks about how he's, like, the greatest director. He says, like, Michael Bay is shit. He, like, just disses people. Uh, he apparently has a restaurant now that has really good reviews, actually. But he just has a really strong personality. I think the other thing that he's really famous for is... He challenged uh, some of his critics to a boxing match, and he's a former uh, amateur boxer, so he literally just beat the crap out of them, and he took footage from the boxing matches and put it into his adaptation of Postal. So, Serp and I have been kind of making our way through the Uva Bull canon, because uh, Uva Bull is someone that Serp has a lot of respect for. As regardless of how you feel about Uwe Boll, you got to give him credit because he made a name for himself. Like, people are going to remember guys like him and Tommy Wiseau decades for now. Like, people are going to care about The Room. People are going to care about Uwe Boll a long time for now. But people aren't going to, like, people don't even remember what the movie of the year was, like, three years ago in, like, the Oscars. So. There's that aspect to it. Also, he was just a hustler. Like, he got the films made. Uh, you can say what you want about Uwe Boll, but he made a bunch of movies. And that was in the face of a lot of people telling him he couldn't do it, and a lot of people telling him he shouldn't do it. So, Serp and I have been making our way through it, and if you like this, I'll do a review. I might do a review of Alone in the Dark anyways, because I have a lot to say about that movie as well. And we also watched In the Name of the King, which is one of the most baffling movies I think I've ever seen. But you got to give Uwe Boll credit. His video game adaptations are at least interesting. Alone in the Dark is one of the worst filmed movies I've ever seen. He actually got some like C-list actors like Christian Slater and Tara Reid for it. I, I, I don't know. He got like really like beat a lot of... A minus list actors from the name of the king, but it's it's such a poorly filmed movie, and the editing's so bad and the plot's so bad, 
it actually works pretty well as a horror movie because it's really surreal and dreamlike and it's just really weird but it, it actually is kind of legitimately creepy and sort of disturbing kind of like with um the new mutants so you got that then you got in the name of the king which is this like huge budget movie and they got like jason statham and ray liotta and like all these other a minus list actors the only problem with that was it was too long. So my point being that his films are at least interesting. And that brings us to House of the Dead after five minutes. But I mean, the man is kind of more interesting than the movie and kind of the lore surrounding it. So House of the Dead, this has the reputation for being one of the worst movies ever made. I remember I saw it when I was when it first came out and I was like 13 or something and I I remember it being really bad. I had kind of gotten caught up in all of the Uva Bowl hate. I wound up seeing, I think, Alone in the Dark. I rented it from Roger's video at one point. I saw In the Name of the King in theaters, and that was one of the best experiences I ever had. I think I was crying. I was laughing so hard when I watched it. But I remember it being really bad, and people have been insulting this movie and dissing it. So Serp and I decided to watch it, and to be honest, it wasn't really bad. Um, I think that was the most surprising thing about it. As far as like a direct-to-DVD horror movie from the 2000s, I would actually say this is quite a bit above average. If nothing else, the, the cinematography is actually pretty good. Um... One thing I like about it is they, they they had a pretty good lighting, even for the night scenes. So, like, when you're having the big action scene and stuff, I can very clearly tell what was going on. Because a lot of movies, when it's filmed at night, it's really confusing, it's really hard to see. But in this one, I felt like they did a really good job of that. So, I, I didn't really get lost on what was going on at any point in the movie. So... It honestly was, like, not that bad. I mean, it wasn't good, but as far as, like, action schlock, it, it... And I don't know if that really makes it disappointing or not, because you were hoping for something really bad, and it was just kind of okay. But maybe let's just kind of dive a bit more into this. So the plot, if you can call it that, for House of the Dead is there's the biggest rave of the year going on in a island. I forget where the island even is supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be in the south somewhere, because I think it's called Isle de Morte, or the Isle of the Dead, or, or something like that. And our cast of uh, characters show up, and they bribe a uh, skipper, and I use the term skipper rather than captain, to take them to this island. And, like, the kind of the hijinks begins, like, around this part, because the U.S. Marine Corps, for whatever reason, is going to search his ship, and they, like, tell him that they told him in advance that they were going to search his ship, but he still has illegal stuff on the ship, even though they told him in advance, and they pay him, like, a thousand dollars, and he outruns the U.S. Marine Corps. What the U.S. Marine Corps is doing searching random ships on the coast i i don't really know but they wind up doing that and the captain of the ship for whatever reason is played by uh i'm probably gonna butcher this uh jorgen proc now aka duke Lido atreides and the captain from das boat and it's it's hilarious like what is he doing in this random Uva Bowl movie. And he's by far the best, like, part of this film, because, like, there's a part where zombies are attacking his boat, and he's just, like, casually... I think he's smoking a cigar while he's doing it, just shooting them, like, getting headshots on them, and just calmly walking around his boat, destroying them. And, uh, spoiler alert, when he dies later, it's like a badass death scene. But he's just awesome. and. I don't know why he's in this movie, but I'm glad that he was. So he takes them to Isle Morte or whatever, whatever it's called. And when they're on um, there, 
They find out that the rave has been completely destroyed. And then we hear this really lame story about some Spanish guy who discovered the secret to eternal life. And he's been taking people to the island and turning them into zombies for generations. And we get a, there's a lot of just random nudity in this movie. It's, it's really kind of gratuitous and sort of pointless. Like, once again, I'm not really prudish. Like, I don't really care that much. But it was just kind of gratuitous. I think that would kind of be my complaint. If we're talking about the, uh, the nudity in this film. So, it kind of like uh, a lot of the movie is just action scenes. Like, it's them wandering around the island. There's not really that much of a plot. The um the Marine Corps lady shows up and she's pretty cool actually. Um, despite being a little cringy that she's like female special forces or whatever. But she's a badass. Um the captain's a badass. And you have like a scene where the captain was smuggling a whole bunch of weapons. So you have like a ten to fifteen minute long action scene where they're just killing zombies, and it's it's actually quite a bit of fun. Um, it's it's better shot than a lot of action scenes. One of the big criticisms of this film is they use footage from the game as like the transition. So when they're going from one scene to another, they'll show footage of it. Also, when they are doing um, sometimes during combat, they'll splice in some footage. I actually don't dislike it. It's it's kind of funny. I mean, this is schlock. So if you're going to make schlock, you might as well go the whole way and, and try to make it sort of memorable. So honestly, like, that's not that bad. Um, it, it has some of the worst writing and the worst acting I've ever seen in a movie. But once again, that kind of makes it a bit more interesting. Um, it makes it less mediocre and more of kind of a mixed bag. So it's like, it's not even that bad. And then, then you get to the end of the film. And the ending is kind of really a letdown because they really didn't know like what to do for the last like 15 to 20 minutes of this film. And it's just, I, I don't even know. They try to have a plot or something. It gets really confusing. They like find the bad guy's laboratory. I don't know. The, the FBI randomly shows up and does fed posting. It's, like, I, I don't even really know how to describe the last 20 minutes. It was just really boring. And the film kind of self-destructs. And I know it's hard to say it self-destructs when it's, like, action schlock. But I kind of wanted the schlock to keep going. I wanted, like, the craziness to keep going. And it just kind of slows down and tries to be serious a bit. But even so, like, I still think this is above average for, like... A direct to DVD. Maybe it was in theaters. I can't remember if it was in theaters or not. But I think it's above average for a horror film. It's definitely more interesting. Uh, it's more competently shot, and the um, action scenes are better than a lot of movies from uh, this time period. So I don't know. I'd actually kind of rec recommend watching House of the Dead. If for nothing else, then just kind of for the history of it, because it's such kind of an iconic bad movie from the 2000s, and it's Uva Bowl. And it's kind of one of the emblematic Uva Bowl movies. I'd say probably House of the Dead, um, In the Name of the King, and Alone in the Dark are kind of the iconic Uva Bowl video game movies. So, like I said, it's actually not bad. Um, it's it's kind of interesting. It gets boring near the end of it. But by and large, it's actually fairly well paced. The problem within the name of the king is they have two really long battle scenes, the second one of which is garbage. And the movie's just too long. And if they had have cut out the second battle scene, the movie would have been a lot better. I mean, it was it was awful, but it would have been like more watchable. But they just kind of screwed it up. So anyways, um, House of the Dead, not nearly as bad as I remember it being. Uh, I'd say it's probably worth a watch. Um, like I said, if people want, I'll do a review of more Uva Bull movies. They are pretty interesting, if nothing else. Besides that, how is it like a best-selling video game? Because it's not really sold. I think it's just mainly in arcades at like movie theaters and stuff, but whatever.